Greetings in Christ, as we still continue in these unusual, uncertain, and anxious times, we're going to continue, as we mentioned earlier this week here at Zion, uh, to not meet together for corporate worship. All corporate worship, events, Bible studies have been suspended until April 7th as we follow those shelter-in-place orders from the governor. But in the meantime, for you and your family, whether it's right now over the radio as we broadcast or if you're going to watch this video together later on, we're going to be offering up prayer offices on Wednesdays and Sundays. And so today I'm here with the vicar and Carl on the organ and a couple elders to help us uh, put this on and record this for you all. Hopefully you find it uh, efficacious and a good way for you as a family to continue to hear the word of the Lord during these times. While this can't replace corporate worship and our gathering together around the body and blood, this is something we can do to hear the word of the Lord as we go to him and cry out in our prayers, offering him back those words that he's given us. So if you'll pull out a hymnal, if you have one at home, we're going to be following the order of Matins on page 219, 219 in the Lutheran service book. You'll also be able to find the bulletin to this service on our website at ziondecatur.com. Let's start before we go through that Matins service by singing the opening hymn, hymn number 420, 420, Christ the life of all the living. We sing. Thank you. Thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, 
Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Dear
The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent comes from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The epistle comes from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Please stand. The gospel reading comes from John chapter 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept him, this man, from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, and his hands and feet were bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God 
and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation this morning is that gospel reading from John chapter 11 an assigned text for this fifth Sunday in Lent that couldn't be much better timed. Listen again to verses 23 through 26. Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a little while ago, life was good for Mary and Martha. They had everything going. They had a great brother named Lazarus whom they loved. They had a comfortable life. They had a great and thriving relationship with this guy named Jesus who they trusted and believed in. Life was going great. Pie in the sky kind of moments. But it would not last. There were storm clouds of disease and death gathering on the horizon. A little while ago, life was good for us, too. We had a great community and state and nation and world that we loved. We had a comfortable life here. We had a great and thriving relationship with this guy named Jesus who we trusted and believed in. Life was going great pie-in-the-sky kind of moments. We had all the toilet paper we could want. We could congregate, gather, wherever and whenever we wished. We could socialize and be together. The stock market was surging. Our economy was thriving. This church, this sanctuary, was full of people. But it would not last. There were storm clouds of disease and death gathering on the horizon. Everything changed for Mary and Martha. Their brother Lazarus became ill, sick, deathly sick, deathbed sick. Things weren't looking good. And so they sent out word, be prepared for the worst. And they called out to Jesus and told him, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Do something, they were crying. But Jesus delayed. He waited. He did not come. Their pleas, their prayers seemed to fall on deaf ears. They trusted Jesus when life was good. Would they trust him now that Lazarus was sick and the future seemed uncertain and unclear? Everything changed for us too. People started to become ill. Sick, deathly sick, deathbed sick. Things weren't looking good. That virus that seemed so far away was spreading. It was no longer just a news item, but it was starting to pop up nearer and nearer to us. All over America, over the globe, even in our own county. Toilet paper started to disappear. That stock market started to plummet. Less people were coming here to the sanctuary out of safety. They were staying home. And so word went out. Prepare for the worst, people said. This could get bad. And so we called out to Jesus and told him, Lord, we whom you love are ill. Do something, we cried. Put an end to this pandemic now. But Jesus delayed. He waited. Our pleas, our prayers seemed to fall on deaf ears. We trusted Jesus when life was good. Would we trust him now that people were sick and the future seemed uncertain and unclear? It all went belly up for Mary and Martha. The you-know-what hit the fan. 
their world was turned upside down. Lazarus was dead, gone, buried, over. Life as they knew it was now completely in tatters. Their world was shattered. Death had made its ugly presence known right there in their midst. And everything they trusted and believed and hoped in, well, it now seemed so much more difficult and dark and scary. They trusted Jesus when Lazarus was sick. Will they trust Jesus now that Lazarus is dead? Now that death has come. Now that they were smack dab in the middle of the valley of dry and dead bones. It all went belly up for us too. The you know what has hit the fan. Our world has been turned upside down. The pandemic, this pandemic has reached every corner of the world. The toilet paper is gone. The stock market has all but crashed. The church, this sanctuary right now is empty. Jobs are ended, and people are dead, gone, buried, over. Life as we know it is completely in tatters. Our world is shattered. Death has made its ugly presence known right in our midst, and everything that we trusted and believed and hoped in, well, it now seems so much more difficult and dark and scary. We trusted Jesus when the pandemic was starting. Will we trust Jesus now that it's fully here? Now that death has come? Now that we find ourselves smack dab in the middle of the valley of dry and dead bones? Dear friends, as you contemplate those questions, as you look all around you at a scary and anxious world, listen to the rest of this magnificent narrative from John chapter 11. And hear in it the faith the hope that Jesus teaches, that's even greater than we could imagine. Jesus showed up on the scene far too late in the eyes of Mary and Martha, and not the way they wanted or hoped or thought was best. Our brother is dead, they say to him. If you had been here, you could have stopped it. Yet still they have some faith in this Jesus. And so he teaches that. He leans into that. He shows them where their hope really lies. Martha says, I know that Lazarus, my brother, will rise again on the last day. But Jesus does her one better. The resurrection and the life, the hope and the eternal bliss for all people, it's not just in the future. It's not just some distant thing for Mary and Martha. It's staring her smack dab in the face. Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. Do you believe this? Jesus asked. Do you trust this? Do you trust me? Do you trust me in the face of good and bad things? From there, Jesus weeps. He weeps for Lazarus. He weeps for Mary and Martha. He weeps for all of those ones gathered in their mourning and their pain. He weeps over their struggles and their sickness. He weeps over heartache and anxiety and death. All of those things that we have brought into this sinful creation. But Jesus ain't done when the weeping is over. This Jesus has work to do a lesson to teach, a hope to share. Jesus is now going to show what he is and what he is about. Where have you laid him? Jesus asks, foreshadowing the question that will ring in the garden on Easter morning. And then Jesus goes to the tomb, right smack dab in the face of death, and he has the stone rolled away like it will be on Easter morning. And then the very word of God himself, The word of God in human flesh. The creator of the universe. The word of God that spoke over those dry bones through Ezekiel in chapter 37. That word of God speaks. He speaks with a voice that cannot, will not be denied or ignored, not even by death. He cries out, Lazarus, come out. And just like that, at the voice of At the command of Jesus, death itself is helpless. The grave is impotent. 
it can't contain or keep this dead body. And Lazarus comes out. He breathes. He walks. Leaves the tomb alive. Restored. Unbind him, Jesus says. And let him go. And the story ends there with life. With unbinding. With resurrection. For where Jesus is, there is life. Where Jesus is, death has no power. Where Jesus is, there are the promise of God's eternity and immortality and salvation rests. I know that life is scary right now. I know that our world has been turned upside down. I know that you're scared and worried and anxious. Death feels so near and so powerful. But dear friends, take heart. I'm saying this in the middle of a pandemic. Take heart and rejoice. Rejoice together with those who are around you. Delight yourself in this great news from John chapter 11. For your Jesus lives. He is the resurrection and the life. And he has come and spoken the same great news of promise and eternity and immortality and salvation to you that he spoke to Lazarus. In your baptism, Jesus spoke to you. Out of your death and sin, Jesus poured water over you. And he said, child, come out. And out of sin's grasp, out of death, you walked, breathing and restored and alive. And then Jesus unbound you, forgave your sins in the words of absolution as he continues to do. As he speaks to you his hope and his eternal news. A word that enfleshed the dead bones in Ezekiel. Trust me, Jesus begs. Believe in me, Jesus pleads. Know that I am with you always into eternity. And where I am, there is resurrection and life. Jesus delayed when he heard the news about Lazarus. But his delay didn't change a single thing that mattered for Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Nothing really changed. They were still loved by this Jesus. This Jesus still went and suffered and died and rose again for them. And in him they still had salvation and eternity guaranteed. And so it is for you, dear friends. Even though Jesus may delay in the response that you desire from him, even though he may delay in ending this pandemic, it doesn't change a single thing that matters for you. For you are still loved by Jesus. He has still suffered and died and rose again for you. And baptized in him, you have salvation and eternity guaranteed. The coronavirus has not changed that. It hasn't even touched it. This world and this life is filled with things that can hurt you. Things that can take your health and take everything else. But there is nothing that can touch your salvation. So rejoice this day. Laugh a little at the incredible goodness and the eternal blessings that are yours in Jesus. For no matter what, is it, what it is that puts you in the grave, whether it's cancer or an accident or even COVID-19, no matter what it is, Jesus promises that he will stand over your grave and on that last day he will shout, Child, come out. And you'll rise again. For he is the resurrection and the life. And in him, nothing has really changed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's join our voices together now and sing hymn 430, My Song is Love Unknown. Savior's love to me, love. 
love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? He came from His blessed throne, salvation to bestow, but men made strange and none the longed for Christ would know. But, oh, my friend, my friend indeed, who at my need his life did spend. Sometimes they strew his way, and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day. Hosannas to their King, then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. Why, what hath my Lord done? What makes this? rage and spite. He made the lame to run, he gave the blind their sight. Sweet injuries, yet they at these themselves displease and and needs will have my dear Lord made a way a murderer they save the prince of life they slay yet cheerful he to suffering goes that he his foes from thence might In death no friendly to but what a stranger gave. What may I say? Heaven was his home, but mine the tomb where. so divine never was love dear king never was grief like thine this is my friend in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly We'll continue now with the prayers in the Matins office on page 227 in your hymnal. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine, For thine is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom and, the and the power and the, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your spirit upon them. Join us together with the communion of saints in Christ, even though we must for a time stand apart. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your spirit, that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. O eternal Lord, your Son has given us the new birth of water and the word, and planted faith in us, that we might be your own children. Bless your church. Supply her with able, fearless, and caring pastors to nurture, uh, nurture us in your word. Raise up faithful fathers and all those who will teach and pray in your name in every Christian household. Keep your church in your mercy, that she may believe without fear and love without limit even now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic, and teach us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh, merciful Lord, your son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endurance to all who suffer illness who are troubled in mind or whose time on earth is short. Spare us from death now, but give us courage and comfort far stronger by your power over death. Give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying, and give that same comfort and peace to us who live in the shadow and fear of death, that we would neither live nor grieve as people without hope, but trust in you at every hour. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join our voices now and sing him 575, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Right. 
solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenants and blood support me in the raging flood when every earthly prop gives way he then is all my hope and stay on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand when he shall come with trumpet sound though may I then in him be found clothed in his righteousness alone redeemed to stand before his throne on Christ the solid rock I stand all other Again, blessings to you in Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. A couple reminders, brief announcements for you. Uh, once again, just to reiterate, we, will, we have suspended all corporate worship events and Bible studies here at Zion until April 7th. Uh, so please stay tuned for more information. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to be back together. Uh, we'll see as things progress what that looks like as that date comes nearer and nearer. But for you, in a fa for you as a family, uh, this Wednesday we'll be putting up another prayer office, another Vesper service uh, for the midweek of Lent. Uh, this week we'll be looking together at the fourth commandment. We're going through those ten commandments. And so we'll be looking at that commandment to honor your father and your mother. So be sure to tune in on Wednesday. You can find that on our YouTube page, uh, Zion Lutheran Decatur. Also, you can find links to that on our church website, ZionDecatur.com. So be sure to check all of those things out. In addition to all of that, just want to reiterate again, please reach out to us, reach out to me if you need anything. Uh, we're here to serve you in whatever way we still can during this time. So call, text, or email. Uh, if you need a visit, if you need any other kind of care, please be sure to let us know. Otherwise, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, stay healthy, and the Lord bless you.